Hey guys, welcome to Trinity's training page. Uh, this is our portion question of the day portion, I should say. Uh, today's question is brought to you by Vicki Rayburn. Uh, Vicki's question is how do you handle slash correct for whining at the line or giving a bark when you give the back command. Uh, the bark is happening as the dog is being sent. Uh, the dog will honor and set when denial bumpers are thrown. Okay, I'm assuming that uh, you probably uh, are talking about like on a blind retrieve. That's uh, what we use the back command for here. Uh, some people possibly send their dog on marks on back. Um, but uh, anyway, that being said, uh, whether you're running blinds or marks, um, the way I, I handle that, um, first of all, uh, let me back up a little bit. First of all, I try my best to, uh, you know, when I start marking dogs, uh, to try and not let them ever get in the habit of barking or whining. Um, and that's simply done by, you know, Tell them if they ever do, tell them to be quiet, you know, kind of uh, scruff their nose, quiet, quiet, and don't let them pick up the bird. Um, another thing that we do here, um, in, in you guys that's been following the Trinity page all along, you've been seeing Trinity uh, getting steadier and steadier as we go. Uh, it's so minute the steadiness progression that you got to really kind of look for it to realize that it's happening for instance yesterday when we were running marks um you know she was watching the bird go completely down on the on the first mark and you know i would she would sit there and i could release the collar and then send her on her name well but by the time we got to the fourth mark you know i was having to kind of hold her back a little bit but I was holding her a little longer, letting the bird settle and send her, okay? Well, where I'm going with this on that is a lot of dogs that have vocalization problems have been pushed way too fast, way too hard uh, for lots of different reasons, uh, steadiness being one of them. Um, I absolutely hate to get dogs in here at the kennel that are five months old and their owner brings them out and they tell them to sit and they throw them a bumper and the dog will just sit there and whimper and whine and carry on and then they release them. You know, you're not doing them a favor by doing that in my book, okay? And, and I've said this many times, what I'm doing may not be right, it may not be wrong, but it works for me and I believe in it. So I believe that lots of vocalization problems are caused or man-made. Um, you know, now how would I handle that on a dog that is already having this problem? So I'm going to tell you a little story here about a little dog that I trained for a gentleman from Alaska a few years ago. And uh, it was a little uh, spaniel. And uh, she was as high drive as they come and she had been steadied up way too quickly, way too young. She would bark at every bird you throwed from the time the gun was shot out in the field uh, till the time the bird hit the ground, till the time you sent her, till the time she picked the bird up. She sounded like she was about to attack that thing and eat it alive, but it was just her excitement was so much, and she had been allowed to do this for so long, it took me about six months to get her to quit this. But the way we done that is she spent six weeks and never picked up a single duck at this kennel because of her mouth, okay? The way we done that is we put, we put Tooney out at the line, and we told her sit, mark just like we do all of our dogs and we had the gunner out in the field shoot the boomer and then wait about you know she would bark and i would tell her quiet quiet and i would get her quieting down and then i would have the person throw the bird and she would bark and i would correct her i'd scruff her on the nose and tell her quiet quiet and then i would go put her on the truck 
okay? I wouldn't, if she, if she barked or made any noise whatsoever, she would never pick up a bird. So she, she didn't ever get to pick up a bird for about six weeks, but she's seen lots of birds fall, okay? And I was looking for, for my opportunity to show her that when you be quiet, you get to go get a bird, okay? So it started out, the gun would go off, she quit barking at the gun, okay? So we still had a long pause, 10 or 15 seconds. Throw would throw the bird, okay? Uh, she would bark, go put her on the truck, okay? So eventually we got to where we could shoot the gun, pause, throw the bird, the bird would hit the ground, and then she would, she would wait for, I would sometimes wait for an entire minute to work. I mean, she never would lose focus on that bird. She would stay focused on it. And whenever she quit trembling and shaking and started breathing normally again, then I would just simply say, Toonie, and she would go get the bird and come back and not bark, okay? Well, it took me about six weeks to get to this point with Toonie. And, um, you know, but, but that being said, I had, I had set a standard with her, okay? Now, the first time her owner came, I, I took him aside and I said, look, this is what we've done. It's taken me this long to get her to be successful without barking. He came down after I had her running quietly for about two months. And, um, you know, he ran her a few times and I explained to him that, you know, she makes a whine, a peep, a whimper, or anything. She's not going to get the duck. I, I mean, I don't care if I'm at a hunt test with her. She's not getting the bird. All right, so so we done this for a couple more months, and he done really well with it or whatever. And then one day, all of a sudden, we, we go and elevate the uh, situation a little bit. We throw a flyer for her. Well, she barks. Well, instead of putting her on the truck, he sent her for the bird. So he wrecked about six months of training in one minute. So that being said, um, you, once you raise that standard to not barking, man, you got to be diligent about it, okay? If you're telling that dog, you know, if you're cueing that dog on a blind dead bird back and you say back and they bark, I would just say, no, here. And then I would like them sit beside me and I would scuff them and tell them, get quiet. And then I'd, you know, I might, I might move up a little bit. Um, sometimes, you know, you can curb that excitement by getting closer. Like if you're running to a back pile or whatever, you, you take a couple steps forward. Um, and, you know, that sometimes will help you out. You just have to kind of get their mind, get their mind going in the right direction. Kind of help them focus on what they're doing, kind of, Kind of desensitize them to it a little bit. Uh, don't let them get away with it. That's the whole thing about training dogs is if you see something you don't like, the only person that can fix that is you, okay? Um, you have to be an outside-the-box thinker. And what I'm telling you, fix this dog, may not fix your dog. It may fix your dog quicker than six weeks, okay? Um, but I don't. I don't really have a big problem at my kennel with dogs barking. Um, maybe I don't have dogs that are as high drive as the next guy, or maybe I just do a better job with keeping them quiet to start with. Um, right now, my truck is a little bit out of out of balance on on barking dogs. Okay, I've got a couple dogs here that that um, that came from their owners pretty much as a backyard and forgot about dog and uh, they barked when you know you drove up to come home because they wanted your attention and whatnot and they got fed and watered and that's about it well that's transferred over to dogs that bark on the truck okay they bark when the trucks moving around like if I move from the kennel over here to the technical ponds they bark or whatever so we put bark collars on them um, also um, another uh, form of corporal punishment that we do is we take a you know we take a piece of uh, it's kind of like it's not really PVC pipe but it's just a piece of real flexible flimsy hose better describes it and we'll get them out and we'll spank them and tell them to get quiet you know you don't you don't have to you don't have to beat the fire out of them okay you don't have to 
holler and scream at them because that doesn't do any good. Um, just get them out and punish them a little bit and tell them, be quiet. You know, just talk to them like you would your kids. You don't holler and scream and, you know, beat the fire out of your kid because they didn't do something. Now, you might, well, you may not, but we do at my house. You might spank your child if they don't do right, you know, but you don't have to abuse them. And the same way with these dogs. You show them respect, they'll show you respect. So that being said, you you figure out a way to get that dog quiet. Um, you know, if you're having problems with them barking, identify the problem like you have, uh, and you said it's on back. So think outside the box and figure out a way to uh, simplify it a little bit for the dog or whatever. But, I, you know, this barking thing, is it, it comes up quite a bit. Um, and I know people that uh, have a real good friend that lives over west of here, and he's got a dog. They've went and had his his vocal cords removed and all kinds of stuff, and he's just he's just a chronic barker. I, I'll be the first one to tell you that probably uh, some of them just can't ever be fixed. Okay, I don't. I'm not the uh, I'm not the man that has all the answers, but I'm willing to I'm willing to uh, give you a few answers that I have. And I'll try just about anything to fix one uh, that I can. Anything short of abuse, um, you know, I'm I'm always thinking outside the box on how I can do things. And so I, I just challenge you to try to figure out, uh, you know, what's causing the problem. And and before that, figure out what caused it originally, and then maybe step back to that and uh, revisit wherever you think the wheels came off that's brings up another good point that's a that's a good good reason for you guys to be taking notes when you train your dogs again i've i've got a, a tablet that i keep notes on um you know and if i start to see a problem occur i make a note of it and that way if i you know six months down the road oh Oh, Fluff Fluff, he decides to start barking when the birds are going off. You know, I make a note of it. Well, then a year down the road, Fluff Fluff's still barking. I can go, hmm, you know, I don't really remember exactly when that started, but I can go back and look in my notes. Oh, when we started, you know, steadying him up, it, it took about, about 10 days to get him steady. Maybe we need to go back and revisit that and, uh, you know, kind of what I would do is um, kind of take a step backwards okay I might let him I might kind of start encouraging him to 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 break again and to be loose again and all that and, and do that for a few days and kind of let him relax and just be a dog and just kind of do what comes natural then I might go back into the steadiness a little bit slower and a little bit easier and just see if that'll fix it I'm not telling you that that that'll fix it but that's worth a shot, you know. But what I'm trying to do is get you guys to think for yourself here uh, on this question. Uh, because I guarantee you, if I had the answer to, to, to this question that worked for every dog in every situation, I'd be a wealthy man. Well, I hope this answered your question. I appreciate you asking it. You guys enjoy your day. We're going to go get Trinity and do a little walk and fetch. <laughs>